President Obama is blaming us for how he's going to go down in history. He keeps pointing the finger at us here at Fox, not just for Hillary's loss, but for why he has a tainted legacy. Most recently, take a look at this. He said to The Atlantic, and I quote, in 2008, I was never subjected to the kind of concentrated vilification that you see of Fox News. You started to see that kind of prism being established toward the end of the 2008 race, and obviously, almost immediately after I was elected, it was deployed in full force. Here we go again. Why is it always someone else's fault? Joining me right now, Howie Kurtz, the host of Media Buzz on the Fox News Channel. Howie, it's this victimization thing that they keep doing over and over and over and over again. It's not our fault that he couldn't get the economy going. It's not our fault that Hillary Clinton couldn't engage voters and thereby continue his legacy. Yet he chooses to blame us. Yeah, blaming Fox and blaming Rush Limbaugh. Uh, look, uh, Barack Obama has less than a month left in office, and he doesn't seem to be able to get past this Fox fixation. What he seems to forget whenever he takes these swipes is that, as president, he's got the biggest megaphone in the world, certainly far larger than a single cable news network, and, and yet he seems to feel like he would have been a lot more popular, a lot more successful, if it only wasn't for the terrible people at Fox News. <laughs> you know, maybe he should take to Twitter and just tweet out his message a little bit more. Uh, somebody else is doing that pretty successfully. Yeah, uh, but, you know, be. I think it speaks in, in broader ways about how the left, for whatever reason, it's, it's a victimization thing, right? It's always someone else's fault. It's someone else's fault. You don't have a good job. You haven't gotten further ahead in life. You know, nothing to do with maybe your own reality, and maybe you didn't work so hard. They want someone else to take the blame. And this is President Obama saying it's Fox News. That's the reason. If I have any taint on my legacy, that's why. Right. The president had half a point when he talked about uh, how many people maybe he's a fictional character uh, because it's not really about him. If you're angry at the government, you're angry at the head of the government. I get that. But to keep coming back to Fox and Rush and that sort of thing, you know, what also conveniently is left out of that equation is there are these other media outlets. Oh, New York Times and Washington Post editorial pages, uh, another place that his initials are MSNBC, that have very positive portrayals of the president. And so uh, I, why he dwells so much, and, and the fact that he doesn't make a distinction between the journalists at Fox News, he had a perfectly fair interview with Chris Wallace uh, a few months back, and the opinion people, uh, I don't know. I know he's smart enough to get that, but he chooses not to dwell hmm. on that. Well, I have some advice for the outgoing president. Get over it. <laughs> Thank you so much, Howie. The votes are 10 votes, Donald J. Trump. You so love You don't deserve to be in America. Shame. 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 You Shame. 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 This is my America. Shame. This is my America. Shame. My America. Shame. Shame. Take me out if you fight. This is my America. <laughs> That's a Wisconsin woman losing control during her state's electoral college vote, which of course went to Donald Trump. She screamed at electors, you see her there, accusing them of selling out and saying they don't deserve to be in America, that it's her America, my America. There she is. Can you imagine, you know, think about it, if things were reversed, and that was actually a Donald Trump supporter saying, supporter saying this is my America. Well, you know the media would be ripping that supporter apart. Meanwhile, you've got groups right now like MoveOn.org that are warning more protests are coming, especially for the inauguration. I mean, why can't those on the left just come to terms with reality? Why can't they just move on? Why can't they start focusing on the future? They've got a lot of healing they need to do internally. Ford O'Connell, Ellis Hennigan, back with me. You know, it, Ellis... If that had been a Trump supporter, people would be going wild. The fact that she said this is my America. I mean, look, <laughs> it's everyone's America. And you want to change it? You get out and change it. You actually start encouraging a candidate like Hillary Clinton to go visit places like Wisconsin and campaign there. And then maybe you get a shot. But, you know, for them to be blaming anyone else other than themselves and for them to express this kind of sour grapes, I question it. First of all, get that lady a Valium, okay? I, I mean, she needs some help, clearly. Uh, but listen, you know, there's crazy people in our political system. And it, it, does it, for instance, do you believe, Trish, that all reasonable dialogue is among Trump supporters and the crazy people are all the Democrats? Because that's not really the year that I noticed. 
So, you know, I, I, I'm trying to hear you out. I, I think the problem that this country has faced right now, Ellis and Ford can elaborate on this, is that many on the right feel as though they've been shut out, that they're not allowed to have an opinion because people like that woman that you just saw, they're doing all the talking for everyone else and they're refusing to entertain or allow any other thoughts in their head. It's happening in the political discourse in this country. It's certainly been happening, happening at universities all across the country. It's as though the left will not tolerate any kind of discussion that does not completely fall in line with their train of thought board. Where have you all well, been? My God. Right. This, is how, really? this is how liberals yeah. are conditioned to act when they don't get their way. They, they, they basically kick and scream. But I have to say something in this particular situation where it was the Wisconsin electors. I see something far more sinister here, and she's actually subverting the system. This is a situation of the peaceful transfer of power, and Democrats always find it curious every now and then when they wake up every four years and find out that the Electoral College actually controls who the next president of the United States is. So remember, not only does she need a volume? She also needs a lesson in high school civics. Well put, well put. Um, you know, look, it, it, people are talking about changing this electoral system. They don't like it. I don't know where you come out on this, Ellis, but I'll tell you one thing. I'm a small town girl from New Hampshire. We got four lousy electoral votes, but you know what? We get candidates that actually come to the state of New Hampshire to campaign because we got four votes. Well, I'll, I'll tell you And otherwise, if it were a popular system, you know, I'd be sitting uh, high on the hog, I guess, here in New York City because we'd get all the candidates and poor little New Hampshire would get no one. Well, I'm going to advance a wild theory here for you, Trish, that all Americans ought to have the same vote. We shouldn't depend on what state you live in, whether you're rural or conservative or liberal or urban, we all ought to have one so vote. So tyranny of the majority? Vote would do That's that. what it is? That's tyranny exactly. of the majority. No, in other words, then basically well, New York and L.A., <laughs> they get all the say and everybody else, good luck. Crazy idea, right? know, but I think we ought to be Trish, equal. to give you an example, but Alice, hold on. Basically, Donald Trump won, what, 2,623 counties, and Hillary Clinton won 489. Basically, Democrats want to marginalize oh. the rural vote, which is, by the way, the majority of this, of this nation, and they want to basically keep it within the towns where they mm -hmm. control the government and use their Saul Alinsky trappings to keep them on the dole, to keep the government going, which is the way they want it. Did this you ever read Atlas talk. Shrugged? Crazy talk. If you think that a rural <laughs> county in, in, in Montana ought to have the same votes as, as, as New York City, I, you guys have a very Absolutely. different view of democracy It's than the I reason do. why we got two senators from very every state, different. right? This yeah, is why we'll, it was set up this way. Amendment, you Alice. should be we'll all talk for about this. It. We'll Come get on, to that. Ellis, we'll get to that after diversity. We get rid of this diversity. Power. Aren't you talking about a diversity of opinion? Uh, Don't you want diversity why? in the White no, House? The only no, way you no, get no, it is if everybody one. has a fair shot at having yeah. their opinion be heard. I see. Why don't we? What about one person, one vote? Are you guys opposed to that so you're much? Not a this is it's, you it's, it's a silly that, conversation, frankly, to be having because there's that. a reason why the system was set up the way it was, and like it's democracy. something we should be proud of as Americans. You don't like and democracy. to threaten that or try and change that, uh, the irony, of course, in it all is pretty amazing. Prince Charles, yes, the Queen of England's son, Prince Charles, he's weighing in on the refugee crisis, saying, and I quote, "The suffering doesn't end when they arrive seeking refuge in a foreign land." We are now seeing the rise of many populist groups across the world. And then he goes on to say, all of this has deeply disturbing echoes of the dark days in the 1930s. Why does everyone keep going to the 1930s? Why do the elites keep saying that? You know, he's preaching all this tolerance from the comfort of his London palace while you got people getting run over this, run over uh, by a truck in the streets of Berlin. Joining me right now is Washington Examiner Editorial Director Hugo Gordon. Good to see you, Hugo. I mean, to yeah. me, it, it, you know, and I'm a student of history, I think it's disrespectful to make yeah, that kind know, of comparison. I, I agree with you. Uh, you know, it's a shame that he went and on, this, uh, on this tack. Most of, the, most of what he said was a good uh, focus on the persecution of Christians and other minorities by Muslims in Muslim majority countries where ISIS and others are trying to commit genocide. And then he go down, went on the tack. I think it's an overwrought comparison. A lot of people try and make it. But what we have to remember is there's certain people on the left who are apt to make this comparison. You remember that Ronald Reagan and George W. Bush were both compared to Hitler. You know, it's, it's a comparison that's often made. Hey, why are they so free to make that? I mean, that's, that's the kind of thing that, you know, you save for when you really need it. Uh, and yet the left repeatedly, I mean, we, we've heard so many people make these comparisons and they throw it out there like it's just, you know, a common yeah, well, thing to I, say. I, 
Well, absolutely, and it's, it's kind of distasteful. It's a kind of gutter comparison. Uh, frankly, uh, they like the boy crying wolf. They said it so often, and I think this is actually what we're what we're what. Uh, Prince Charles is actually watching is not a return to the 1930s. It's true that establishments are being thrown out uh, all over the Western uh, world. Um, and that's because electorates have become uh, very, they don't respect politicians anymore because politicians, they don't think politicians tell them the truth. When uh, politicians like President Obama mm -hmm. or Hillary Clinton yeah. say that Muslims have nothing to do with terrorism, People know they're being lied to. Well, so look, you know, I, I'd say this, and, and you, you're obviously British, right? I think I hear an right. accent. Uh, yeah. You know, so, so I, I don't quite have the same appreciation for the royals, perhaps, that you would. But, you know, gosh darn it, I thought they were supposed to stay out of politics. And, you know, it's very easy to say this kind of stuff when you're surrounded by Secret Service and you're living in your palace and you're protected. But everyday folks out there in Europe are really dealing with this struggle as we are seeing right now in the streets of Berlin. Hugo, good to see you. Thank you so much. Uh, what's going on here elsewhere that you're hearing? Um, well, a lot of speculation inside the FBI. And I'll tell you, this is something you and I hit about on. About Entenmann's? About Entenmann's and yeah. uh, Rudy Giuliani. Rudy Giuliani is a Brooklyn guy. Guarantee he ate a lot of Entenmann's. In Didn't Entenmann's start in Brooklyn? It did, as a matter of fact. There we go. See how I And I grew up with a guy who was related to someone in the Entenmann's family, so he got sure. all the Entenmann's he can eat. Sure. It's, it's on my food pyramid, but <laughs> I digress. Go ahead. <laughs> anyway, uh, Rudy, a Brooklyn guy who ate plenty of Entenmann's uh, cakes uh, over the years, uh, the speculation inside the FBI is that he is at some point going to be tapped to replace Comey. Now, we should point out Jim Comey, the, the controversial uh, current director of, of the FBI, the, the Obama appointee, who is a Republican, who turned kind of the election upside down, as you remember, um, sure. weeks before the election was over. Uh, uh, he basically announced he was reopening the, uh, the, the probe into Hillary Clinton's email server. Uh, you know, the, the Clintons and the Democrats think that was that cost to the White House. I don't. I think o Obamacare premium spiking has a much more a imp bigger impact on the well, bottom line. They're not saying that, boy. They're no, they're not. They don't, want to oh take any, they don't want to commit that. They'll just Jeez. talk about Comey. But I think, you know, tr Trump believes there's a lot of people inside the Trump. I don't know what, what Donald believes, but there's a lot of people inside the Trump inner circle believe that, you know, Comey is someone that probably has to go. Remember, she initially did. But he has like another gazillion years left on his term, right? Officially. There's like, ways around that, I hear. Like, really? Yeah, I mean, listen, he, in, 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 in many ways, he serves at the president's pleasure. Discretion of the president. And, and there is a discretion that you can try to get rid of him. So that's, right. that's one thing. And then the other thing is, has, I don't think Carl Icahn eats sentiments. No. Now, he's a New York guy. He, he eats sentiments as well. You're a very big he, health He's an advisor now. You're too. a health Trump. Do you eat this kind of food? Uh, here's what I'll, I'll tell you. I don't. Okay. Um, I will every now and then indulge on the weekends. I've been doing. Do you eat raw cookie dough? No. I've been doing bark lately. You ever tried a chocolate bark? It's very good. No, never have. It, it's got some fat in it, but it's, it's, sure. it's much less refined, and it, it, ta it tastes actually pretty good. Wait a minute. It. Charlie Gasparino is trying something that's not refined? You no, know, much less refined is good. Oh, okay. When you use refined products, refined Understood. sugar, it's sure. bad. Kabish? Sure. Like whole wheat pasta is better than I'm not regular best pasta. My cardiologist it's, it's, might be watching, but I'm I just think he's you. traveling. I'm telling you, man. Stick with me. All right.